Let's do our walk around on the pie. You can see the pins on the pie. This is pin 2, this is the 5 volt. This is pin 9, it's a ground. I also use pin 6 sometimes. Uh, this is pin 13, so this is our input back from the from the meter. It's the yellow wire. I use the same color coding as the as the meter uses the red, black, yellow. And then we follow our wires over here to our voltage divider. This is the wire that goes back to the Pi pin 13. This wire goes over to the plug on the meter. And this is the ground. And you can see our two resistors. I'll put a diagram at the end and label everything nicely. There's our plug. So red goes to red, yellow in the middle, black. That all checks. There's our meter. You can see the impeller inside there. This is my Python 3 tachometer for the YFS201 flow meter. It's using polling. I wrote this program, well, it's an interesting tachometer program, but I really wrote it because I wanted to find out what this, this meter is doing. And I suspected it wasn't doing what I thought. I originally assumed that the meter was giving me one pulse per revolution, and it turns out that's not true. So, anyway, this is how I found it out. This uh, uses a pulse preferred system as opposed to a time preferred, and what I mean by that is it activates when I get a pulse back from the meter. So if the meter is uh, stopped, it, nothing will happen. You won't get any more readings. Uh, it's just it gives you no readings. Versus if I had a time preferred one, say every five seconds it would give me a reading. So this one, if it's not moving, there's no reading. Whereas if I had a time preferred one, I would get a reading of zero. Um, this counts pulses per time, not time per pulse. And note that the YFS201 gives six pulses per revolution. This is one of the things I found out that was rather interesting. It's using a nested while version and it uses the RPI clock. It also checks for stop rotation. That's one of the reasons you don't get a reading when it's, uh, when it's not doing anything. The input is on pin 13. Uh, pin 6 ground, I'm also, I also sometimes use pin 9, I think I use pin 9 this time around for ground, but any of the grounds will work. Uh, the 5 volt CC pin to the RPI is pin 2. The input must go through, that's pin 13, must go through the voltage divider circuit. You cannot put 5 volts directly from the Pi back into the Pi. You will fry your Pi, trust me. This is just a brief note to myself reminding me that the input, uh, how the input is set up. So there's a 4.7k ohm resistor from the power uh, that goes to the pi pin 13 and then there's a 10k ohm resistor that goes to the ground on the RPI. Uh, I'll put a diagram at the end of the video so you can see. From actual experience the RPI can only pull 30 times a second sort of 15 transitions from north-south, north-south, north-south like that. It can only do about 15 per second, so you have to watch that because if you overspeed your device that you're measuring, your RPI will no longer be able to measure it accurately. Okay, so let's go down and look at the code, the stuff that's actually doing stuff. Okay, we're going to import the GPIO stuff that allows us to, to use the pins. Uh, we're going to use the time and we're going to use sys. I tried to use sys to allow me to break out of the program nicely uh, by doing a control C. It still just uh, smashes the program to a stop when you do it, but uh, I'm going to keep working on that, see if I can make it more beautiful exit. Uh, I'm going to use the GPIO board mode. A lot of people prefer the other, but I prefer board. We're going to set the input pin to 13. That's the one we're going to do the counting on. Uh, GPIO setup, so pin 13, we're going to make that an input. This is the revolution count, so this is like how many revs per second we're going to do. Total counts, just for fun. Uh, time start, time end. I'm keeping these so that I can know when the impeller is stopped is one of the reasons, and the other reason is so I can get the revolutions per second. GPIO last condition, okay, so was it a zero or one? 
This is another thing I'm doing to maintain, to ensure that I don't get a false readings from a stopped impeller. And then the last thing is uh, the number of pulses, zero to five, in other words, six pulses from the, from the meter. And now we'll go to the active code. The first thing we do is we just print a header that says flow meter, tachometer, revolutions per second. This is approximate. You can still get false readings if it's oversped or what have you. Uh, control C to exit. Well, the control C will exit, but it's still not beautiful. I'm still working on that one. Uh, just got an infinite loop that goes down to here. And so we're going to keep repeating this infinite loop from here to here. First line in the infinite loop is the revolutions count. We're going to reset that to zero. We're going to reset the total number of pulses, or sorry, the zero to six pulses. We're going to trap the start time. Then we're going to go into this second while loop where we look for six pulses, in other words, one revolution. So every time it goes through this loop, it should be one revolution. So this should go from zero to five. The GPIO current state, we're going to grab that, and that's going to be the input on pin 13. If GPIO current is not equal to zero, and GPIO current is not equal to the last state, so in other words, it's changed from zero to one or one to zero since the last time we looked, then we're going to increment, and then we're going to save the GPIO current as GPIO last. We'll repeat this six times. We'll drop out. When that happens, we're going to update the revolution count because it has to go six times before you get one revolution. So we'll get one revolution. I'm keeping the total number of revolutions just for fun, no particular reason. And then we're going to keep the uh, last time so that we'll know how much time elapsed between revolutions. Then we're going to print out one line that tells us the information. I've got a lot more information than you need for a real tachometer, but okay. And that's the end of the code. Um, yeah, so let's run it. I've been running it. You can see over here on this side I've been running it. But Okay, there it begins. Notice it's not moving. That's because, as I said earlier, this is activated by pulses. It's not time activated. I'm going to use a tube. I'm going to blow air through here because if I run water through this in the TV room, my wife will have me killed. You'll be able to see it speed up and slow down. Speeding up, slowing down, I over revved it. So here we have the first number is revolutions per second. This is just the time elapsed between the, the readings. And then this is just the total number of revolutions that we did for the whole thing. Okay, well that was it. Uh, this is how I discovered that the meter is not putting out one pulse per revolution but rather six pulses per revolution. When I wrote this program I looked kind of weird and things weren't working right so I measured it a little bit at a time and found out oops yeah I'm getting six pulses. So that's why I wrote this tachometer plus it's also going to be applied to other tachometer things. I'll make a video on that in the future. Okay well that's our tachometer for the water meter. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your Raspberry Pi experimentation.